Mr. Beat presents Presidential Elections, elections in American, American History. History. The 38th presidential election in American history took place on November 3rd, 1936. Almost four years earlier, Franklin Roosevelt went straight to work, causing the federal government to become more involved with the economy than ever before. This was at a low point of the Great Depression, and Americans were desperate for any kind of positive news. They wanted the president to do something, anything, to try to help the economy. And Roosevelt, or FDR as we will call him from now on, gave executive orders and signed laws that were all meant to provide what his historians call the three R's. Relief for the unemployed and poor, recovery for the economy, and reform of the financial system so that a depression like this never happened again. These laws and programs became famously known as the New Deal, and they are the reason why today we have things like social security, unemployment benefits, an eight-hour workday, a federal minimum wage, the FDIC, the SEC, and a bunch of other organizations with cool abbreviations. FDR's New Deal was the federal federal government micromanaging at an unprecedented level, and in normal conditions it probably wouldn't fly. But like I said, the people demanded action, and FDR delivered. While most Americans supported him, some did not, and the New Deal did not end the Depression. Some even argued it just prolonged it. Just before the election, the Great Depression had entered its eighth year. FDR wanted four more years to more aggressively push more New Deal programs. The New Deal had become very popular with the Democratic Party, and he was renominated with little opposition. Vice President John Nance Gardner was once again his running mate. My home state of Kansas dominated the Republican Party this election. While the party had many potential presidential nominees, only two stood out. Alf Landon, the former millionaire oil man and governor governor of Kansas, and William Bora, a senator from Idaho who had went to the University of Kansas. The party's establishment went with Landon, who actually supported many New Deal policies, yet had a strong reputation for being fiscally conservative and reducing taxes in Kansas. The Republicans nominated newspaper publisher Frank Knox as his running mate. Louisiana Senator Huey Long, aka the Kingfish, had planned to run for president in 1936, but he was assassinated the year before. A month after he announced he was running, actually. Like his friend Father Coughlin, a Roman Catholic priest who was also a big radio star, Long had originally supported FDR in 1932, but later they both criticized him, saying FDR was not doing enough to help the poor. Long actually promoted the controversial Share Our Wealth program, which called for a massive redistribution of money from the super-rich to everyone else. After Long died, Coughlin pressed forward with the movement, which eventually turned into a new political party called the Union Party. According to to some historians, Coughlin and Long never wanted to really win the 1936 election. They just wanted to split the progressive vote to cause FDR to lose. Regardless of whether or not this was true, the newly formed Union Party nominated William Lemke, a U.S. representative from North Dakota who lacked charisma and a chance at winning this election. Thomas O'Brien, a lawyer from Boston, was his running mate. Some political pundits predicted a close election, but the New Deal was very popular with many Americans. And with the depression still dragging on, many still kept their faith in it. Alf Landon was considered no match for FDR. Plus, he sucked at campaigning. Well, actually, he didn't campaign. A columnist joked, quote, Considerable mystery surrounds the disappearance of Alfred M. Landon of Topeka, Kansas. The Missing Persons Bureau has sent out an alarm bulletin bearing Mr. Landon's photograph and other particulars, and anyone having information of his whereabouts is asked to communicate direct with the Republican National Committee, unquote. And he here are the results. Franklin Roosevelt destroyed Alf Landon. Not quite literally, but dang, look at that electoral map. Talk about lopsided. This was the greatest electoral landslide since the beginning of the Democratic and Republican two-party system. FDR received 523 electoral votes, and Landon received eight. No, you didn't mishear that. Eight electoral votes, which was two states, Vermont and Maine. This was the biggest electoral victory ever, unless you count the uncontested election of 1820 or the George Washington elections. FDR won 60.8% of the popular vote, compared to Landon getting 
winning just 36.5%. Again, not counting 1820 or the George Washington elections, this was the second highest popular vote percentage in American history, next only to the election of 1964. William Lemke finished third with 2% of the popular vote. You might say it was an embarrassing loss for Landon. Before the election, some polls had predicted Landon would win. Oops. However, one advertising executive named George Gallup conducted a scientific poll that predicted FDR would win. His correct prediction made public opinion polling more important in future elections. And today we have the Gallup poll named after him. So the New Deal continued, as it probably would have anyway. And so did the Great Depression. <sighs> I'll see you for the next election, buddy.